In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Hollybro Copus Scene Whoop. Now, I've been testing this for quite a while now, and to be honest, I'm quite impressed due to a couple things. One is the flight time, two, the durability, and three, just the overall execution here. So, the one I got here today did not have the DJI Air unit within itself. I had to install this myself. However, they provide you with everything you need, and the installation took less than seven minutes. The longest part of the installation was to just basically remove these four screws. Now, for motors, we're using T Motor 1507 motors that are 3800 kV, which proved to be really great, especially with the propeller they're using here, which is the T Motor 3140R. So these are T Motor propellers that they're using here. However, they only give you one set, and it's the set that's already pre installed on the quadcopter. So keep that in mind. They also provide you with an anti slip battery pad that you'll install yourself, and it works absolutely great. Now, in terms of execution about the antenna placement of the DJI Air unit, from the way that it's set up and the way that the propeller are set into place here basically it'll just be held up by these 3d printed parts however if you do get this i highly recommend you find another way to secure them just a bit more so just keep that in mind i didn't have them go into the propellers so that's really great it, it takes quite a lot for them to pop all the way down into the propeller as you can tell right here so um just because of the overall stiffness of the antennas themselves so that kind of helps there now if we take a look at the battery uh xc60 here i really like what they've done here very stable, very rigid, and it keeps the battery wires out of the propellers, which is something uh, really great, which um, it's just less of a headache to work with, really. Now, for the receiver, I am using an XM Plus radio, and this is the only place where I really found to mount the antennas, which did really great. And uh, we're going to take apart the inside right now and take a closer look here. Now, before that, let's take a look at some of the things they do provide you with. So, they give you this really nice carrying case, and they don't really give you much of anything else except the... Uh, the USB cable, which you'll need, but it's still a pain in the ass to actually uh, install this cable without taking anything apart because the micro USB is all the way on the bottom right there and it's not that easy to actually get this in depending on how loose your motor wires are you'll be able to pop that in but be very careful so you don't uh, rip a pad out of the ESC or probably rip the motor wire here when installing this so i highly recommend you actually take apart the upper frame and then uh come in through there which it's, it'll be much much better for you so keep that in mind when doing that so now let's go ahead and take a look at the internal execution here so out of the box when you get it especially without the dji air unit they already have this cable ready for you just to be plugged into the dji air unit and uh, if we take a closer look here you could kind of see it's this cable because they're using their f7 flight controller that is meant for the dji air unit and this does not have an on-screen display for analog cameras but it does have the osd for the dji air unit now if we move to the back here we see they've set up a fat low acr capacitor which is nice to see and it's a 20 by 20 esc it's their tico 32 f45 amp mini escs here which performed really great i have no complaint about them and for the receiver where i decided to run my xm plus since i don't have the remote controller for the dji here what i did instead was uh i've set up an xm plus right there and i just used upside tape to hold it onto the duct here and uh i'll show you where i've gone ahead and soldered that up real quick so as you can tell i've given it five volt and ground we have this is five volt this is ground and I've set up my S bus signal on RX2. Now, you, if you had an I bus receiver, you could also set it up on RX2 because this is an F7 flight controller. So you'll be able to fly. And under the beta flight, you'd want to set up the serial RX on UR2 in order for you to control uh, your quadcopter and obviously set it to S bus or I bus or whatever you're using here. But if you take a closer look, you can see how beautiful the execution is done here. So if we take a closer look at the bottom of the frame, it is a three millimeter bottom plate here and it is a one piece bottom plate. Some people might not like that, but most of these do come like that. And if we take a closer look at the mounting hole solution here, we see that it rocks two setups. It rocks a 20 by 20 and the other setup could be 30 by 30 and or 20 by 20. So it can either do two 20 by 20s or a 30 by 30 and a 20 by 20, which is really nice to see. And it would just keep it balanced very well that way. And not only that, uh, you have much more uh, space to put something else, maybe a run cam split if you wanted to set up there. You could do quite a lot with it. And uh, if we also take a closer look here, we see they have TPU uh, printed parts in order for it to stay off the ground so you don't scratch the bottom when you land. Also, we do have a buzzer set up right there, which is really great out of the box. The flight characteristics is obviously nothing like a, a racing quadcopter. However, uh, it is by far one of the most efficient, most stable uh, scene whoops I've flown, which I really like. I was able to get six minutes of flight time 
cruising flight time with the 1800 milliamp china hobby line so that was really impressive to me and again this is also my first ever run with the dji because i've i've recently gotten my dji goggles uh, which took forever to arrive especially with the whole coronavirus thing that was going on and uh, i'll have a separate video on this however i am limited to 25 milliwatts because i am in europe so i've been flying it in my bandu at 25 milliwatts and i have a really good video um, that i'm working on and uh, compiling all the info that you might want to know about it if you still haven't transitioned here so we're going to get into that very soon now, a couple things that I can tell you about this setup or the DJI setup, these scene whoops with the DJI, the overall flight experience is beautiful because you could see everything just absolutely phenomenal. However, the final recordings that are made on the DJI Air unit itself, in my opinion, are not of great quality. They're okay quality. They're really, they're pretty good quality. But it's not something I see myself using on a daily basis if I'm going to be, let's just say, reviewing or doing some uh, real flight photography. I won't be using this camera. It's, to be honest, mainly just for the HD flying experience. Now, and also when we come back to it, the latency, I could totally feel the latency. Well, at least on my 25 milliwatts, I could totally feel the latency on this. However, now coming back to the quadcopter itself, it was a joy to fly. It was a joy to cruise around. I didn't have to fight it. I was even able to do some tricks here and there. It's overall wind performance. It handles wind quite okay. Um, it does get pushed around every once in a while, especially when I go higher. I could totally see the, the effect of the wind pushing it around, but I'm not expecting much. It's a pretty, uh, tiny little quadcopter here that's carrying a lot of weight. So another thing I forgot to show you here was where the battery strap will actually fit in. It's using two double sided, really thick, strong adhesives that'll hold the DJI Air unit off the carbon fiber in order for you to drop your battery strap through here. And, um, um, you know, I, I really love the execution, but it is missing some, you know, key parts. That's not really a deal breaker. For example, what we have is, you know, accessing the USB is actually is a really big pain in the ass. Also, accessing the SD card is a pain in the ass. And um, also the antennas here, these aren't going to last very long up here. So that's kind of something that needs to maybe maybe looked into. Now, overall, as a quadcopter itself, it's really nice, very efficient. I mean, six minutes of flight time, close to four, five minutes on a 1500 milliamp. On a 1300, it was maybe around four minute-ish. Well, it depends because I can't really say that because every battery I flew a bit differently. The, for example, the first couple batteries, I was flying very smooth, uh, pretty low uh, camera angle on the, 50, on the 1800 milliamp, just making sure it works so I don't lose it and just flying around, taking it easy, try to get some shots here and there. Um, and, you know, I was actually quite surprised that it, that it flew for six minutes constantly, which is really great. Another thing about this is that the OSD is already basically set up for you. So once you have everything, once you plug in that DJI Air unit, especially if you got the one without the DJI Air unit, the OSD is already automatically on your screen. I didn't have to do any, I didn't have to touch anything basically. It did everything by itself. Uh, the only thing I had to do in Betaflight was uh, set up my modes and also uh, set up the UART for the S bus because I wasn't using the DJI's uh, receiver part. I was just using DJI for the goggles. And overall, it's a very well-balanced scene whoop. So if anyone was looking into picking up one of these, go ahead and grab it. I'll have everything linked down below if you could check those out. Those greatly support the channel. And also, come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways. I might be giving this one at the end of this month or the end of next month. New Patreons also get their own giveaway. So go check it out. You'll see what everybody's winning. And new Patreons, let's just say I got three this month. There'll be a special giveaway just for you three. A premium giveaway. Maybe this, maybe another quadcopter, whatever I get uh, throughout the month. So yeah, come join my Patreon. You support this channel and you get some awesome stuff and you get access to my secret shop and i'll see you in the next one guys peace out